Uh, Jeff and uh, myself go back a little way because uh, um, we wrote a, a um, bit in the history of recollections booklet. Oh, golly, that was mm -hmm. 10 years ago, maybe. So, and, uh, so, uh, and Jeff grew up in, in Ringwood, but um, oh, but that's forward and backwards. And if you want to highlight something, you just. Yeah, I was going to ask for a long stick, but that's. No, no, you can do that. It's a, light, it's a laser cut. Yeah, that's forward and backwards. So, uh, and uh, I'll let you take it away. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want the light on? Or is that? No, I think I'll give you a right. Well. Our family's history started in about 1950, from what I can work out. My uh, grandparents uh, moved into, bought a property in Bonadorn Avenue. <coughs> and uh, my grandfather also bought two blocks in Green Street, which was above it. And my uh, <coughs> They, they built the place there, started, they built a bungalow on the back of 7 Green Street in uh, 1954, which was when I sort of came along. At that time, there was only six houses in, in Green Street. There was, um, of course, all the roads were unmade. And uh, the... Uh, the street had um, parallel with Bonadorn. It's a yeah, sorry, the picture of the first one. Just basically a goat track. It um, it uh, and all here was uh, all open paddocks, and up on the hill there was uh, a place owned by a, a, a spinster called Miss Hill, and she was uh, in the, she worked as either for or with a, an estate agent, and that property, that house there was one of the old original Blood Brothers properties. But um, Green Street was, uh, well it was a la Australiana because slowly, all, all, all of this here, which is, goes up up the hill where Dr. David's place was up on the top there, uh, all, all that was all paddocks and it was all paddocks down here and uh, I used, one of my first jobs was to uh, mow all this property of Miss Hills and uh, with a not with a lawnmower but with a big side or a sickle or something like that it used to half kill me. <laughs> and along that boundary there was a big line of great big cypress pines that the Blood Brothers must have planted all those years ago. And my dad and I have the years there's only about one left now but we were responsible for that at Miss Hills request. <laughs> I hasten, I hasten to add. But the Green Street was, um, was, was a hell of a street, actually. If you started from this end on the corner of uh, Green and Dublin Road, there was a big cutting there, and Dublin Road was just a dirt track as well. <clears throat> but as you went along the street, there was an architect lived on the corner. After all the houses were built, an architect lived uh, there. Then there was, next to him was, um, Old Jack and Betty Moon, he was a bricklayer. Then there was uh, an elderly couple, they must have been all of 50 of them, she's our old. <laughs> they, they lived there, and we were here, but next to us was a uh, great old guy, great guy, the Commonwealth Bank Manager, Bill Watt. 
Oh, yeah. He, 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 still yeah, he's still around. Yeah, he's still seen now and then. Uh, he was my next door neighbour, old Uncle Bill. Uh, and then my old man was a cop. That's why it turned out so straight that uh, we were there. And then there was a really old people, they were about 60, they were called the murders. They, they lived next to us. And there was a guy who, who was pretty forward for his time. He was a young, um, he used to go around mum and people's lawns. Oh, I reckon gave old Jim's a bit of a few ideas somewhere along the line. <laughs> and he was quite successful. He, they were friends of uh, my parents. And when our house was built at number seven, uh, they moved into the bungalow at the back of our place. And he, by hand, dug two huge big holes by hand, which became the underground garage and and um, part of his house he built up on top of, of course, but he did it all by hand. And next to them were, uh, at number 13, were the Williamses. He, he uh, had a career of elders. And my brother, actually, from seven, married the girl from 13 in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the same street. <clears throat> I went a bit further afield. I ended up with a girl who lived in Dublin Road at the end of the street, so it was, it was a little bit. But uh, then there was uh, old Harry Wilson, he was a postmaster at Ringwood East, and uh, his wife Norma. And on the other side there was some Indian people, and there was a headmaster who ran off with one of the teachers, and there was a Dutch, old Dutch family on the corner of Howard, uh, there, and then as it went along this side of the street, some of the um, some of the um, original houses were on that high side. There was the Edwards, an old Mrs. Miller. She used to live on the corner, and there were the new people down the end who were always good. If you want to sell some raffle tickets or something, they were very friendly. But <clears throat> the centre of our universe in those days was all this was all bush. It was all um, uh, scrub paddocks all here on this side of, of, of Howard. All up here was all big pine trees and that. And all up in here was all, all Dr Davies's place. And that's where we, we just turned it as the bush and that's where we used to go. And it was for in of Margaret's uncle's or relative's backyard that we, we used to play in. But from, from there, from the end of Green Street and, and Wood Street there, uh, we used to go to school at Eastwood, which was up here. Uh, in, we could go all the way down, all the way down through here, uh, over there toward the byways, down in, all the way down to Greystale Avenue. We could go all the way down to there, and it was all bush, and that's where we used to play. There was a lot of, there was a couple of, um, up to, there might be a map of, um, I think there is, isn't there? We'll go ahead a bit. Here we go. That's a good time. Yes. So Green Street was uh, was about here. Wood Street, Wood Street was there. Green Street came off about there. So <clears throat> we used to have free range of all this here. We used to get, go a couple of ways. We'd go through down to Eastwood there. We'd go down, or Vista, down that way to Eastwood. But all this, it, it, I think it was subdivided about 56, was it? 58. 58, was it? Even though it was subdivided, there was still some time late before a lot of fences went up. So, imagine our shop, we'd been going through here every day to school, or we went the long way, back along, uh, uh, just to back, um, back up through here, and then back down through there to Green Street. But most of the time we shook, Took the shortcut up Scenic, I think Scenic was there. Yeah, I think that was Scenic. Is that Mondolano Park there under the north? This is all Mondolano here. Yeah. That's all Mondolano. So we used to go from there all the way down through, all the way down in Greystale, down here somewhere. <laughs> it was a ter ter terrific place. And, and, and one, one very interesting thing was um, this property here was. Um, owned by Lamana, or Pat Lamana and his wife. Uh, they lived there, 
And when I was about 10 years old, I, we, we, uh, they were putting, they were building Lamana's house, which was about here. And whenever there was a new house going up somewhere, we used to be there straight after school. We'd go straight to where the construction was, wait for the builders to go, because any nails that they miss hit or dropped it under the footings of the floor, we used to get the nails because we, we had, we had, there was hardly a tree or a thing that didn't have a hut or a cubby or somewhere, and all, we collected all our nails. But one, one particular, I must have been about 10 years old, I was sitting up here on the footings and it was getting a bit dark, and I looked down Homebush Court, which went down here, it was um, just a goat track, that was Ian and Margaret's place there, and I was sitting up, up, up there on the, on the hill, on, on the footings, looking down this little, basically, goat track that ran down the hill, down to Bedford Road. And just in here was a, a, a little old, funny, weatherboard <coughs> house with, uh, with uh, it was blue, and it had a heap of big oak trees all around it. And I was 10, but I was somehow drawn, drawn to that. And, and I, I, I don't know, I'd had a funny feeling just sort of staring at it. And uh, blow me down about 14 years later, I, I, I bought it. And that was there. <laughs> oh, that, that was it there. This was, it was number 15 of these blocks that went up there. The others ran along Bedford there. But um, I'll go on to Eastwood anyway. Well, there's one Bolano Park. Well, that was gifted. Uh, what was the guy's name who gifted that? Lawson? No. Rawson. Rawson. Yeah. He, um, he gifted that the year I was born, in 54. He gave that to the council. And um, it was a, uh, where we spent most of, most of the childhood. But getting back to Eastwood, how long did that talk? Oh, you got another. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, all our family and all our, uh, our kids and all our friends and all the kids around all went to Eastwood. And uh, it was uh, an incredible era at, at Eastwood. We had a, had a couple of teachers that had an incredible effect on me. One guy was a guy called John Icana. He was a, a, a fantastic teacher and I had him in grade four and in grade six. Uh, another notable guy at the school at the same time was a guy, a guy called Bob Folks. I think they named the Oval after him some years later at the school. Um, but it was um, an interesting time in grade five. We had a, had a teacher, and that was the year, I always remember, that was the year the Beatles came out. And I was in grade five, and Miss Smith, she was, um, she was a, quite a piece of work, Miss Smith. All the, all the classrooms in those days had a, like an old wood heater and it, it was up to the teacher or the kids in the, in, the, in, in the class to get that wood heater going. In the middle of winter it was freezing and you used to have to go up to the woodshed up, which, which was up the back. But I, I, as a young kid I was, always had pretty good with an axe and that so I was actually the wood monitor with my mate. And we would go up there and I'd split up all the wood really fine and get all the dry stuff. And she loved me, Miss Smith, because uh, our fire would be up and burning and the room would be warm and the other kids would have smoke going everywhere <laughs> and they were all freezing and cold. But Miss Smith, uh, talk about times changing, uh, because I was a favourite, because it, she sat next to them, down there on the fire, the fire was right, you know, so she was always warm. And because of that, I had the... Uh, the esteemed job of uh, going to get her lunch down at the East Ringwood shops and she'd give me a <coughs> shilling and her, she was a bit of a health, health and fanatic Miss Smith, way ahead of her time because her lunch order was six chips and six cakes which meant six <laughs> months worth of fish, six <laughs> months worth of potato cakes and then she'd give her two bob to buy a packet of Alpine menthols, <laughs> which we would take back and if I had to get there early to get the fire going and she'd sit there working out the day, sing, 
in the smoking in, in the room, so I had quite a bit of change there. But that was one of my first, um, her year was one of the first years I got a, a little bit of um, entrepreneurial flair going in my life. Uh, occasionally, some of the kids, we used to be able to get lunch order and you get your pie and you get or your pasty or something, and I don't know, whatever, lolly or vicky or whatever it was. But if there was ever any change, they used to put it in the, the people who put the lunch orders together would put the change in the brown paper bag. But a lot of kids forgot it or didn't remember that they had change due to them. So the bag would be screwed up and chucked in a bin. But then it would go up to the incinerator and the caretaker would burn all the rubbish you know, got smoke going everywhere, like I said, times have changed. And um, me and David Edgar worked out that if we went through the incinerator, we'd find all these coins, which, which was the chains that the kids had chucked out with their paper bags. And, uh, well, as soon as you found a penny or two, your first thing you could do was take it down a railway track and stick it on so it would get flattened by the red rats as it went through. The <coughs> But Eastwood was um, uh, really good, but while I was at Eastwood, Dr. Davies was always a bit of a mystery for us. I've read a bit about his life since then, and I have a few twangs of guilt because he wasn't the mad professor that lived up on the hill at all. He was a really nice guy, and um, but I still remember him vividly. <clears throat> he must have... Uh, gone to work by train each day. And uh, he would walk down Vista, you know what Vista was, he'd walk down Vista, um, or come back up Vista, and I remember a couple of times, it must have been mid-winter, would have been about 5 or 5.30, just getting dark in the afternoon, misty night, and we're playing up on the road in the, in the bush next to Vista Avenue. And one of you said, he's coming. Dr. Davies, and old Dr. Davies, he always had, wore a grey coat and a hat, and he always carried a case or a Gladstone bag or something. Yeah. And he always he had a bit of a sideways gait to how he walked. I think he got injured, but was he teen or something? It's been some time. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, <coughs> and the fact that he's walking. But we were paranoid, so we, we'd hide in the bracken or the bushes and sit there. And Dr. Davies would stroll past and he'd go up this and he'd turn right and go up the, up his driveway up to the house up on the top of the hill. But um, it was, I remember it as if it was yesterday. But um, that was, um, apart from the bush, we used to hang around in the, in the dairy down at Ringwood East. We'd get in there and feed all the draft horses. Um, we, um, Ray Hill, as that property was called, was, was our main domain. But uh, we also um, spent a lot of time at Ringwood Lake. And, uh, well, Ringwood Lake in those days, before the sewage, the whole area was, had the sewage system put in, was pretty much fed by what was basically pretty much an open drain that went down from the back of Bedford down that, what's the street beside the high school there? Anyway, it went down. Hill yeah, Street. Yeah, Hill Street. Under the, under the railway line, down and down and, and ended up in, in Ringwood Lake. So it was basically an open drain and the water in it accordingly was uh, the same. But we used to um, go down there on the clay bank on the opposite side from the railway line. We used to get heaps of yabbies. And we'd take them home and cook them and eat them out of the open drain. <laughs> we would catch um, uh, goldfish and carp. And there was always the obliging flasher who would come out out of the scrub and be willing to share all any sort of thing with you. It <laughs> <laughs> was quite incredible. Well, a lot in those days. Um, <clears throat> the um, the uh, one thing we did do. The main water main from, I think, Maroondah Dam through to the city used to run parallel to the railway track. 
on the lake side of the track. Mm -hmm. And it was a bit of a gully there. And so the pipe was normally underground, but it was exposed when, as it went across this creek, which was the drain which formed Ringwood Lake. And it was a, a, a big pipe, and of, mm -hmm. five or six foot in diameter, I reckon. Great big thing. And where it went over this creek, it was ex fully exposed and about, oh, seven or eight foot up in the air. It seemed like a million miles when I was a kid, but it was very, and we used to walk across it. And uh, we were, um, got, got a bit daring one day, and um, there was a group of kids that lived on over the other side of, um, of Daisies, up on the hill near the old antinomy mine. And they were sort of punky kids, and we were sort of punky kids. And we, they'd run across this thing, and we'd run across. So I said, we'll up the ante a bit here. So I got on my Sturmy Archer bike. <clears throat> I said, I'm going to ride across it. So because it was curved like that, you had a, probably an area of like that. If you went too far either side, you would just slide off. And it was pretty scary, particularly when you're over the creek, because there's all rocks there, and there was uh, you're about eight foot in the air. And uh, and to complicate it, that th this mains had joiners every twelve or fifteen feet, which were a big ring on, you know. Flange. Yeah, flange. That's the word. And when you're riding on the smooth bit, was fine. But when you hit these, they were raised up about that far, you know. The, and that made it interesting. So these up, we set the we set the tone of riding our bikes across without getting killed. And the other guys, the other guys, um, decided to uh, they do that too. And so next time we saw them, I said to me, mate Keith Candle, who played footy at East Ringwood and went to school or this week, I said, get on the back, I'll dig you across. <laughs> <laughs> Which we successfully did. And poor old Keith, he nearly died. And then the, the antinomy mine kids tried it and they fell off. <laughs> they, they, they didn't kill themselves, but it, it was, it was in, in, incredible. But where else did we go? We, um, well, the antinomy mine, we used to spend a lot of time up there. Um, I always remember there was a huge big pine tree up on the hill past where um, the bakers, what was the bakers? Yes. Guests. Where guests lived on that street, whatever it was called, and there was a huge big pine tree, had the biggest tree house in the world up the top of that one. And uh, we used to go up there. I also um, spent time, uh, probably apart from Ringwood Lake and um, uh, Wombolano, that we frequented most was the Army Drill Hall in Dublin Road, because uh, that had at that time, it actually had three dams in it. Mm -hmm. it apparently, it was originally the top one and the bottom dam were, were quite deep. And uh, in summer, there used to be a great big pine tree, and we had a swing that used to go out and go under the dam. It was always freezing because the rumour was that it was bottomless. <laughs> the other rumour was that one of the guests' um, baker parts <coughs> was in the bottom of it. <laughs> but, the main reason I hung around it was because it had really good red fin in it. But if you got caught in there, you really got your butt kicked. And, um, it, it, and it was always quite secret if you'd be down there below the surface and you'd cast your line in so they didn't see the rod flashing. And we used to go home with quite a few good reds. We used to swim in there, we used to fish in there. Uh, the middle dam was only small and it was covered in water lilies. And the bottom one was more clay, but the top one was quite clear. It was um, so we spent a lot of time there. Also, um, <coughs> while I was at Eastwood, <coughs> we uh, were not a particularly religious family, but I guess my mother she figured she'd give us the best chance possible, and we were members of the the um, Church of England, whatever it was called, opposite the Scout Hall in Patterson, Patterson Road. And she used to dress us up in, in all of our finery on the Sunday and send us off to, off, off to the church services. And Reverend Mullins, I think his name was, was, was there. And I, he was a great bloke and a lovely family and that, but he had a particularly 
gorgeous young daughter called Cheryl. And um, when Cheryl did a recruitment drive for the, for the choir singing group of the church, I signed up in a heartbeat, but I only went twice. This is not worth it. She's not that long, good looking. <coughs> but that was um, uh, our sort of recreational days. But, but my sort of working career, I started at Ringwood at, at, in Green Street. And I used to do lawns and that around the area. But then um, Buchanan's had a news agency in Railway Avenue, I think it was Buchanan. And I was, when my, he, a couple of mates had paper rounds and when they couldn't do it, I used to do their paper rounds. And uh, then from there I worked at the post office at Ringwood East and delivering telegrams. And then my main, main job at Ringwood East was in Roy Edwards Hardware, which I wrote a bit of an account of one Saturday morning there a while ago on the, on the page. Um, then, uh, what happened then? How old am I now? So after Roy Edwards, um, I think I we left Eastwood, went to Ringwood Tech, again didn't get to move that far, still in the area, played footy at Ringwood East, uh, played cricket at Ringwood East, uh, went to the Scouts at Ringwood East, <coughs> Then, um, when I was 18, I started uh, in opals, started cutting opal in my parents' um, garage in Green Street. And a couple of years after that, I opened up a, a little retail store in Bedford Road, Ringwood East. <coughs> and then, I oh know, before that, I left, I left uh, Ringwood Tech, and I can still remember walking up Heathmont Road the last day of school and thinking, oh, well, what now? <laughs> and uh, I still hadn't thought much about the future. And it was about halfway through January, and my father, he never pushed me very much about much at all. It was pretty, pretty cool. I was sitting there watching telly about halfway through January, and he sort of came in the room and he said, uh, no, I don't want to push her or anything, but <laughs> have you actually thought about, you know, getting a job? <laughs> <laughs> and it was a new, but it was totally new concept to me. It wasn't that I was a lazy little mongrel. It was just that I, oh yes, oh yeah, what do you, well, where do you get one of them? He said, well, you go to the Commonwealth Employment Service in Ringwood. So I thought, okay, spreading my, spreading my wings there. And also I went to the Ringwood Baths. Uh, what else? Anyway, I got a Commonwealth agency and he said, what do you like? And I said, oh, I like listening to music. And he said, no, I don't know. <laughs> Um, no, but, nothing. but hang on, he said. Um, do you know about stereos and radios and stuff? And I said, well, yeah, I do. I play a lot of records. <laughs> and and, and he, he said, uh, well, we've got a position for, for a sales assistant in Myers Eastland. So I really moved from East Ringwood to Myers Eastland. I got a job in Myers. And then uh, I left. I, I had a ball in my eyes, it was fantastic. It was only two stories in those days. And uh, um, I left my eyes and went open mining with my parents and, and then I started out on my own at 18 in, um, in, in Green Street. Then I opened the shop in, in uh, East Ringwood. And then when I was uh, 24, the old man, didn't push me much. He said, have you thought about moving out? So I said, there's another concept. And so I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what I wanted, but I just knew I just wanted a bit of space. Because we had a bit of machinery and that from the open fields, I needed somewhere to store it. And sorry guys, I ended up in Howard Avenue. Not 400 metres as the crow flies from Green Street. And um, I was pretty good mates with a couple of the guys on the council uh, at that stage. I played a bit of uh, lawn bowls with the, one of the town planners and building surveyors or whatever they were. And I convinced them that it would be a good idea. I put about a 30 square brick 
workshop in the backyard, which you wouldn't have a hope for kittens. But they had wives like that also, that was me. So, so we, um, we, we got that through, and, um, and that's where I've been for, for 40 odd years. And uh, with no real uh, reason to get out of, the, out of the place, it was always um, an interesting uh, place. That, that, that all the, uh, oh, there was one, one thing you might find interesting. Uh, Bill Watt, or Uncle Bill, who was our next door neighbour, uh, I used to play footy and cricket with him as a little kid, and we played, all our kids played with their kids, and she was Auntie Judith, and he was Uncle Bill. And when I decided to go into opal business, I needed a bit of dough to sort of get myself going. So I walked into, um, made an appointment at the bank, at Commonwealth Bank at East Ringwood, with Uncle Bill. So I walk in, I go, oh, Uncle Bill, I said, okay, you get I said, what do you want? I said, I want 10 grand. <laughs> <coughs> I said, oh. oh, yeah, what do you want to do with that? So I want to go to Coop Beatty and buy some rocks. <laughs> He said, oh, yes, $10,000. Then he sort of scratched and said, Bill was very liberal with the bank's money in those days. He was a, he was a wonderful bank manager. And he, he sort of said, oh, yeah. He said, what are you going to do with the rocks? He said, I'm going to cut them up. I'm going to put them in rings and pendants and stuff like that. He said, oh, well, yeah, OK. Do you know much about these rocks? I said, well, I've been mining since I was 12. We used to go to a place called White Cliffs. And Uncle Bill, um, I had a fair bit of experience with it. And um, the whole business at that stage was in a plastic a plastic fishing box where I had some little quartz caps, I had little pieces of jewellery and some glue and I used to stick a stone on a brooch and sell it to somebody. And uh, that was it. So uh, Bill said, all right, okay, yeah, I guess we can organise that. And I, um, I, I went to Cooper PD and I bought, bought what a man do a little bag of rocks you could comfortably hold in the palm of your hand. And I was so proud of those rocks. And on the way home, I dropped into Adelaide and organised a few things. But as soon as I got back, I picked up the phone and I said, Can I speak to Mr. Watt, please? And he, and he said, I said, Uncle Bill, I'm back. And he said, Oh, that's terrific. How did you go? I said, I've got some really good rocks. And he said, uh, Okay, he said, um, bring them down, we'll have a look. So I said, beauty, so I went down. I said, there's something else I wanted to talk to you about too. He said, fine, fine, wait till we get here. Wait, wait till you get there. And uh, I sat down in his office and Bill's sitting there and I said, here's, have a look at them. I put these rocks out on the table and he uh, he took one look, he said, oh, oh, they're pretty, and that's, a, that's a nice one, and, oh, not much in that, and he said, uh, how much of the 10 grand did you spend on that? I said, all of it. And he just went quiet, and the little beads of sweet were going <laughs> breaking out his brow, and he said, oh, all of it? I said, yeah, 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 but don't worry, there's plenty of money in there. He said, okay, he said, but what I want to talk to you about was, um, I have a shot my overdraft a little bit. He, he said, how much? I said, oh, I wrote a couple of checks I might have come through here for about four or five grand. <laughs> he said, geez, what was that for? I said, well, I told you I dropped in on Adelaide on the way. I had to buy some machinery to cut the rocks. But I said, I'll have it all back in, in line in, in about two weeks, three at the latest. I'll have money back in the bank, in positive, not negative. He said, you think so? And I said, yeah, and a poor guy, he, he was visibly shaking, as I, but I did. Three weeks later, we were back in credit. <laughs> so, so it was, so that was, um, I think, but I've got a on there. No, no, you can, this, uh, I put some photos. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know if you want to back yeah, and yeah. Comment on any of those. Yeah. Uh, Oh, well, yeah. that was an interesting day. Yeah, that was yeah. 1960 when Ringwood became a, um, city. a city. The parade must have started back near the lake, I reckon. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was. But I was on the... We were all camped up uh, on the high side, <coughs> up on the railway line where that red rattler was going through and that yeah. other photo that was there before. And uh, what was the governor's name? 
Dallas Brooks. Dallas Dallas Brooks. Dallas Brooks. Dallas. He was uh, he was in this car here at the head of the parade and went up the hill to the town hall where all the ceremony and all the rest of the conference and stuff that went on. That's all occurred up there. But as I said earlier, my old man was a cop and uh, he was in the mobile motorbike squad. And because he lived in the area, they needed two coppers to um, escort the governor or the, whatever he was. And uh, that's my old man there on the left. <laughs> and so he, he got the job simply because he, uh, he lived in the area. That was when our Ringwood became a city. Oh, it's part of the parade. Yeah, they started way back here up at the lake. Yeah. And uh, we were we were up on the edge of the railway line where those big sign boards, uh, those advertising boards were. Yeah. I was sitting on the top of them, actually. I climbed up on top of it. And they all went up there to the town hall. Uh, I remember <clears throat> a lot of these shops down here. There used to be a old barber down here somewhere called Roy. Yeah, he used to get a haircut down there. Uh, so you can blame him, can you? Blame him. <laughs> up, up. Yeah, the barber. <laughs> that was all the wise things to me. <laughs> and my favourite store was up here, it must have been up here somewhere, it was a thing called Stoney's. <laughs> Stoney's. Yeah, that was the opposite the chemist next to the railways. Yeah. I always remember Stunners because they had a, um, you go downstairs and at the back downstairs they saw all the really cool stuff, fishing rods and guns and stuff and that. The old man used to go down there a lot of things and copy used to give it a discount. So he, I, I, Stunners was my favourite shop, favourite store. What else? Ah, that's, uh, gee, you wouldn't believe what went on at lunchtime's up in that corner. Yes. <laughs> The stair, the stair, the staircase went, ended up, and we used to get out on the roof and have our lunch. I mean, I had a couple of girlfriends. I used to park my car. I used to park my car out the back here. That's the back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's the back. Yeah, that's all right. That was the staircase up there. And <clears throat> well, an interesting thing happened at Myers. I started as a sales assistant, and um, I was. I'll quickly go through this, but there was a, um, an argument in Maya, Melbourne, um, a guy called, um, oh, I can't remember his name, uh, and a couple of the directors had a blue, because Maya's, the whole, all Maya Southern stores was under, um, under individual buying, each store, each department bought for itself, and uh, Ken Steele was his name, he was the director of Maya's. He had a blue with one of the Myers guys. And he said, we've got to move into group buying where we buy for all the stores just under one umbrella. And then they said, oh, but what about our managers? He said, that's a load of poppycock. He said, uh, we could, uh, I know, a couple of months after I started there, there was a thing called the Maya Cadetship where they had a, um, a, um, a system where they prepared the young cadets to become department heads and, and do the individual buying for each store. Anyway, this Ken Steele and my bloke had a bet, apparently, a hundred dollar bet. They could take a kid from any one of them, a couple of kids from each store, and make them the thing, and it wouldn't make any difference. It would, you know, the, the years of poor old people who worked for 30 years to become these, but, and, what the, the, and it actually happened, they took two cadets from each uh, store. There was uh, Southland and Northland and Myers in Frankfurt or wherever it was in here. And they picked me as one of those cadets. And I'll never forget, they put me in, I was in charge of stereo and radio and televisions. About a month after I started, Colour Tally went nuts. Friday night shopping kicked in. 
stereos instead of being just a little old thing, one piece thing became hi-fi and quadphonic with separate amps and turntables and speaker systems. You can imagine what the sales did. I was referred to as the whiz kid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the poor old guy who used to, um, the poor guy who, who used to manage it, he ended up, I don't know if he topped himself, but he had a good shot at it. And he, he left it, oh, God, I felt bad for him. But um, the timing of everything was, was, was incredible. And um, because our sales improved hundreds of percent, all the, all the reps who used to come there to sell, uh, to, to get an order from the department heads for radios, the stereos, the tallies, whatever it was, would come up to me as if before I was the boss. I was 17. And, and they would come up and say, uh, where's the boss? Oh, I'll go get him. And that he would take the boss to, they had two restaurants in this land, in Myers. And one was the Persian room. It was upstairs. It was a high class room. <coughs> and the other one was a, more like a cafeteria in the, on the lower level. And I had a girlfriend then who was 18 while I, when I was 17. And she had all these ideas about getting married and stuff. And so we were saying our $27.95 a week that we were getting paid for mm -hmm. by Myers for a week. And she would make um, rolls with Vegemite and cheese on, which was jogging on us. And she'd happily come skipping down and go out on the roof together and have lunch. But uh, when I was the partner there, the Sony guy had come in just on lunch. Bad luck for him. And he'd say, go, oh, once he got to know me, he said, Jeff, where, where do you go for lunch? Oh, we go up to the Persian room. I'll shout, I'll shout. <laughs> say, okay. And I said, Jenny, come and skip them down the escalators, come along. She's got a dumb brown paper bag with a dumb roll in it, dumb Sally stick in it. Oh, my God. And, and she came over and said, oh, thanks, Jenny, for getting that. Grab it, chucked it under the register. Well, we're going. Frankie is from Sony. He's going to take us to lunch up the Persian room where we normally go. And he's shouting. <laughs> that went on for, that went on for months and months. That was a terrific time. What else is in here? How did I get on with that? I don't know. I don't know. There's no Yes, yeah. Oh, that, that looks familiar. Yeah. Canterbury Road. Yeah. yeah. Station, I guess, it was. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Station was down there, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Bedford Road came in up there, and Campbell Street went down there somewhere. Yeah. What else is on there, mate? Why ring bar ring? I remember that. Why ring bar? There used to be one of those on Weir Crescent, that um, where the hospital is now. There was one. There was one there when it was a footy ground. There was one of those signs in the middle of the of, of the road there. Why ring bar ring? What else? We got? The East Ring of Railway Station. The Mailand Station. Yes. Yes. Flower Farm. Name is your sister. Of course, the lake is down the back there, and the, 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 the pipe was down way down there, somewhere down on, on the road. Oh, yeah, that's the station. Yeah. Remember there used to be a, a little tuck shop thing up the corner there? Jimmy's. Jimmy, 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 that was Jimmy's it. He had a moustache and a picture of himself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Things there. What else do we got? Oh, that's the other view. Jimmy's up there. So there used to be a dentist in there. Yeah. 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 The overpass went up there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I went there once in, oh, and I remember in those days they didn't have these hot tools these days. It was all belt driven. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I remember he didn't give me enough anesthetic one time. And I was more scared of him than I was of the pain that he was drilling into a hardly half dead to the Midway in there, wasn't it? Yeah. My favourite store was uh, the, wasn't the post office on the corner, and then there was Coles. Yeah. The Coles had two doors, yeah. and the left hand was where the dairy snow machine was. <laughs> <laughs> if ever I, I often thought if I ever broke into this joint, I'm going down straight to one place and <laughs> pull that get under that dairy because all those. Fluffy ice creams you get these days are terrible, but that had was solid, you know. <laughs> Creamy and was oh, where else was it? Oh, Piccadilly was in there <coughs> every Saturday night. And um, oh, we used to go there was the zoo and there was Masters Apprentices and there was oh god, I can't remember now. We used to hang out in there. Oh, that was that was Target or so, um, Lindsay's. Lindsay's. Yeah, it was part of East London, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah one of our next door neighbours was a lovely lady called Irene Edwards. And when I was working in Myers, she had a little blue cortina, and she was the lady manager of um, of that shop there. It was like a Target or linen and that stuff, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. And uh, I used to drive her and my petrified mum, <coughs> who worked in Woolies. And she ended up being the head lady at Woolies, my mum. And, and uh, Irene, and mum was always terrified, but Irene didn't care, she wasn't even watching what I was doing. I just drove them both and drove them home each night up to school. Ah, gee, there's some stories went there. That was a clay bank uh, there. That's where all the Yabbies used to be. The bridge would be probably go across it, probably across it. here somewhere, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Round about there. Yeah. Uh, I remember there was an old locomotive that they had yeah. back over there. And there used to be, um, was a Bing's Cafe? Yeah. Yeah. Bing's Cafe was there, and there was a, a milk bar right on the corner. Yeah. And we would, before we went fishing, we, we used to, that was one of our favourite jetties, then there was another one down the corner, then there was a pipe that came out, then there was another clay bank on this, on this other side here. But we'd go into that milk bar there and get um, bread, this all his all stale bread, and we'd chuck that out in the water and all the carp would come charge around and just drop our bacon and we'd drop you, go another one for you. What else have we got here? Right on Midway? Midway Arcade? It's a bit butchers right on the far end from the memory. Yes. Yes. And it was two story, you could go up here, couldn't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the famous gum tree. That's Patterson's Holden and that was Cooper Smith's Ringwood Timber and Trading Company. How far ahead of the time were they? And down the, down the back there was a big sawmill. Right? There was a little sawmill down the back. And used to drive in, used to be a driveway. Used to drive in there to pick up all your stuff on the trailer and they chuck it on and you take off. But that tree was, uh, oh, it was controversy for years, wasn't it? When all the good would take it out, yeah. but then finally, finally they took it out. Oh, God, I remember the bars. That was the boys' change room, that was the girls' change room, and I love the ring with bars. I got, my, I got my Herald, and I got my junior, and I got my senior there. The diving board was back up this end. And um, we used to go there with the school. And I don't know whether they got a discount rate or what the story was there, but it was always in the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go 
go to learn to swim and to get our certificates and stuff, middle of winter. And, and that affected me. That affected me mentally, I reckon. Because for, for, I died for many for 30 odd. I still do a bit now and then, but without a wetsuit, I would not go in any liquid that didn't have at least steam coming off. It. it was all because of that. It blew. I didn't have a lot of fat. I was a scrawny little kid, and I. And it was freezing. I still remember going there. And there was um, there used to be uh, big cypress hedges all around it. And there was a little the little kids' pool was in there. Yeah. Yes. And out the back was where all the cool elder kids and they were smoking. They were smoking. And there used to be little caravan kiosks thing in there. They used to buy red skins and stuff in there. And uh, gosh. Oh, the other. The biggest problem with Ringwood Pool, I used to ride there from Green Street, was that if you didn't take the valves out of your bike, you used to park your bike out the front, out the front there, and if you didn't take your valves, someone would pinch your valves, and so the tyres were flat, and so you always took, you took, unscrewed your valves, and you took your pump in and put it in your locker, and you put the valves back in, pump your tyres back up, and you could get on if you didn't get the bus. What else you got in there? These no, ones. Oh no, my no, God! There's all this. That's when it burnt. Yep. Oh, now, <laughs> some people have to draw some parallels here. Yeah. I, I was one of the first on the scene when, <laughs> when, when the, when uh, it was the middle, it was the middle uh, wing that burnt. Because we lived in Green Street and I, I was out feeding, we had some ferrets, and I was out feeding the ferrets one, after, one evening, just on dusk. And I got up and all this big red glow in the sky and I raced inside and I, the school's on fire. So we all charged up there in the fire brigade. I was also first on the scene when the scout all burnt down. The scout all on fire. <laughs> 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 I mean, who hasn't that honestly thought about burning down the old building there? I, mean, I know I have. <laughs> no, but I remember that. Then you tried to rescue something out of the scandal. Oh, I did, yeah. That was our beloved stereogram. Yeah. Yeah, the stereogram. I put a post up and a few people questioned, What happened to the stereogram? <laughs> yeah, we go. I got that out. I was working at Roy's and I heard the fire start and I had a key because I was in senior scouts. And we had our senior scout room. And uh, our prized possession, which had taken about um, 10,000 bottles that we used to collect and sell them on the bottle drive and that. And we bought this stereo. Yeah. And Friday nights, all us seniors would go in our senior scout, scout room with our cream records and our Rolling Stones and our junk like that. And some guy always found a pack of cigarettes and someone would bring a couple of old big steel um, carton drafts in the old steel cans. They, uh, they had a bad production run at some stage and all the rib tabs would break off and a couple of kids. Fathers would chuck them. Well, one of those cans just wiped six of us kids out. <laughs> <laughs> but we would, we would, um, uh, that, that particular day when the fire broke out, I got in there and I dragged the stereo out and of course the roof's coming, this is like that, the, the roof's coming in and I oh, nearly had it and I can't see and I can't breathe and the smoke and the stuff everywhere but I wouldn't let go of the stereo, I'm crawling backwards thinking, and all of a sudden it starts raining. I hastened to add, I rang the fire brigade before I raced across. <laughs> from Roy Edwards' farm in the store. And uh, next minute, I'm, I'm at the stage of, well, it's me or the stereo ground, I'm not going to get us both out. And then, then all this rain started, and it wasn't rain, it was the fire brigade in the right <laughs> And all the water was cascading in, in through the roof, which, 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 which cooled me off a lot. And then I figured I was somewhere near the door, because I'm down, because it's had to be below that. And I've got this stereo, I'm dragging, I'm dragging, I'm get you out. You run along, I'm going to get you out. Anyway, next minute, something's grabbed your leg. 
and I get dragged out, so I drag a steer out <laughs> by the leg, he drags me out by the leg, and we got in a little alcove there, and I look up, and there's two firemen. What the hell are you doing? So I was just trying to... Well, they figured they put two and two together, they figured I'd set the fire and oh. try to steal the steer out. <laughs> And it took about an hour to explain they could confirm that it was in fact me that had run from the <laughs> Royal's shop on the other side of the road. And it was uh, it was a uh, and then Roy kicked my butt and said, Take the plants back in, because we used to cover half the footpath with the big boxes of plants and they had to come from somewhere. They came from right at the back of the shop and you can only carry two at a time go really heavy. So uh, and he chastised me and Mrs. Edwards cleaned me up. What else have we got? Oh, that's a bit more timber. And, uh, oh, that's where I used to do the telegram from. Didn't there used to be telephones in there too? I'm sure there were some telephones inside. I think they got rid of the outside ones. Yeah, the, um, we used to, uh, that's where old Harry Wilson was a, um, postmaster for a while, and the, all the bikes and stuff were out. The posting bikes were all out the back there. Ringwood Cop Shop. <clears throat> Funny story about Ringwood Cop Shop. As I said, my old man was a cop, and a guy called Teddy Johns was the sergeant. Teddy, was it? Yeah. Teddy Johns was the sergeant uh, in those days. And um, he was a good friend of the old man, so he used to go fishing together a lot. Anyway, I got to be 18, and I, I got myself a car, and on the 14th of January, um, when I was 18, uh, I said to Dad, I'm going for my licence today. He said, oh, good luck, where are you going? I said, Dad, ring with me. He said, oh, good. He said, look, drive your car down. He said, there's a police parking yard out in this street out here somewhere. That's where a policeman parked their cars, and it's a parking space. So I drove my car there, parked in the police parking spot, then went for my licence, <laughs> got my licence and drove out. <laughs> 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 the, the jails were out the back there somewhere, or was there a courthouse or something? Yeah, the courthouse was there and the jails were out the back there. What else have we got here? Oh, that's not the community hall, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Remember I told you we went to the um, Church of England school with the wonderful Reverend Mullins. Um, I soon got pretty bored and I had the two younger siblings used to go with us. And Mum would dress us up to the nines and we'd go down Dublin Road and we'd go to the thing and sit there thoroughly bored for hours, it seemed like half a day. And then uh, everyone would go out and they'd shake hands and they'd ring the bell or something and we'd go home. Total waste of a Sunday in my opinion. So I thought up a better plan. Mum used to give us some coins to put in the plate thing. And uh, I got a better idea for that coin. There used to be a um, milk bar right there. And there was a thing called buttercup ice cream that just came out. And we used to take some spoons from home and all that plate money. <laughs> we got a tub of it and we sat underneath that community hall. She's lucky you put that photo up. We, we sat underneath that community hall, underneath the floors, and we sat there and we hardly get the whole big tub of it. And then when the bell rang, rang we used to clean ourselves up and walk home. <laughs> How was Sunday school? Oh, terrific. Right What'd you learn? Oh, someone died. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's a drill hall. Oh, jeez. Well, the bottom dam was down there. That pine tree was an intricate part of getting in because they had a, a, a high wooden, it was a laneway there. It was a laneway on that back boundary. And that pine tree there, we used to put our bikes against the fence, climb up into the pine tree and down the other side to get into the bottom dam. And, uh, one of my schoolmates um, we used to walk the railway track, went down there, of course, and Ringwood Lake was down there, down the bottom. And there was an Aboriginal family called um, Onuses. Yeah. The Onus kids used to live in the last house at the bottom of the, the, 
Street, mm -hmm. where we used to go up, there was a signal tower for the railway line. We used to go up over there, over the creek, or over the pipe to get to the... To the and the owners' kids, they used to swim in the lake. They used to read it was great. Yeah, the school was Yeah, the owners. Dublin Road. Dublin Road, yeah, Dublin Road crossing. Um, I think Ian might have mentioned something that didn't have boom gates or anything, that they just had this pendulum thing with a red disc and a red light that used to go ding, ding, ding. Yes, yes. Right? And opposite, that must that must be looking down at the lake, is it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Over on this corner was a SO or service, mm. it was a survey so, thing. It used to be there. We used to walk down that track all the way down to the lake. Or we'd go the other way, if we wanted to squash pennies, we'd go the other way to the bridge. Oh, yeah. The top of Eastfield Road or whatever it was. Yeah. Where's that? Uh, the opposite the footy ground. Oh, that, that was... The um, old oh, tea rooms. Yeah, the tea rooms. <laughs> That's where the boys used to go and have the odd beer. <laughs> Some kind of guys from the footy club used to have a meeting spot there or something. And later on, uh, Ian Callan had a sports yeah. clinic there, uh, a sports shop. Yeah, I think that's further down. Yeah, or further down, wasn't it? Yeah. Then the milk bar was just there somewhere. Wasn't there a milk bar there somewhere? And the, the old mechanic used to be in there. Oh, gee. Oh, you got some good fire there. We used to get up these pine trees. Um, that was all pine, and uh, chuck pine cones on the trains as they came in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and that's where I used to get Miss Smith's fish and chips, was in the fish shop about there. And uh, that was a milk bar, wasn't it? There was a milk bar there, and there was a milk bar on the other side. And there was a bit of a hardware store with a, with a um, bit of a building materials yard in the back there. I go there every day, every day I'm in this room because I post up at the post office. Incredible. Was, was that the one in, near this way? Yeah, 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 opposite the street the town hall was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Well, it was pretty close to Stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then used to go out the back and cross the way this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's down the hill. Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah. Adelaide. Yeah. The yeah. antenna yeah. remind. Yeah. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Apparently, um, Australia is. Uh, was well done if it still is, but it was the fifth biggest producer of antinomy. It wasn't that we had that much of it, but it was a very high grade ore. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's we used to go there. There, there used to be the, the shafts. If they knew what they were sitting on top of in the civic centre, they had a heart attack. There was hundreds of mark meters deep shafts, and they went everywhere. They burrowed all through that hill. Whatever gives way, they know all about it. <laughs> and I remember there, some of the old shafts were, they had um, steel grids all over them. And they, we used to find, you could find chunks of the ore in all the old tailings. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like galena. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. heavy and yeah, heavy quite metallic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, silvery and, and yeah. a silvery grey sort of uh, colour and, and heavy. But soft. Soft. Yeah. Very soft. I could never work out what they used to pull, but I. Yeah. One of the things, okay. and an ally, uh, ally is, I think, also when leaving batteries. That's right. Usually, right. ally with something else. Thanks, Peter. Peter, and, 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 and um, I think the major, most of it comes out of China now, but the major use of it is the flame retardant. That's the drill hole front, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't think we went through one, did I? Yeah, that's all. It's good. It's cool. So that's, uh, yeah, that was a drill hall. There used to be a um, huge big basketball court in there. They had a 
couple of open days, and that was all administration of it. And it was a big. I remember the first time I went in, what's going on? All the all the uh, overhanging lights were in cages. It was to stop the basketballs, you know, smashing them all. Oh. When they were playing, it was a tool. That's where I used to visit. The blue one. Fancy yeah. word. Yeah. After the brief instruction of the bus, into the chains, that would be 65. waiting room just sort of just in there somewhere mm -hmm. and out the back there there was a paddock there that had a bit of a depression when it flooded when it was raining a lot there used to be a paddy pond in there but we used to get all the wire must be from the that was delivered to go to the cannon so the wire wrapped on the bundles of newspaper they used to cut it all off and there was four thousand million miles of wire in a pile of heat down there just in, in amongst that was the old ticket box. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's that's the bridge. Yeah. 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 The old EH. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Rather than the other pillar. And it's different. It's got much more of a crease in the body side. Uh, well, that's where we used to put our sacrificial pennies. They go on the track that big and they come off like a pack. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd sneak we'd be hiding up underneath the tops of the bridge there, you know, like the embankment waiting for the all go apart. That's your Nath Road. Nath Road. Yeah, that was um, in Nath Road where the, reserve, where the kindergarten all that was there now. I remember a kid drowned in there. He, um, there was all that, there was sheets of corrugated iron. Went, uh, Dublin Road must be back down here somewhere. And um, there was piles, there was kids, and there was piles of corrugated iron there, and the kids used to get out and play on this. Little fella, he jumped on the corner of someone, slid under an hole, covered him up. And, he could, and Johnny Knox, who was a copper made of the old man who lived in uh, that next that street, opposite just here, uh, from, uh, he was in search and rescue and he found him. Oh. He had to go get him out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Boy, you were 